Hi friends, welcome to all. In this video, we are going to see the packet tracer activity uh, Troubleshoot Multi Area OSPF version 2. Before that, uh, friends, if you are watching my channel first time, you can subscribe this channel right now so that you will get latest uploading video info directly into your Gmail. Well, coming back to our activity, here we can see our addressing table. Also, uh, here is our objectives, uh, troubleshoot a multi-area OSP of version 2 network. Just we will go through this uh, background. A large organization has recently decided to change the network from single area OSP of version 2 to multi-area OSP of version 2. As a result, the network is no longer functioning correctly and communication through uh, much of the network has failed. As a network administrator, you must troubleshoot the problem, fix the multi-area OSP of version 2 implementation, and restore communication throughout the network. To do this, uh, you are given the addressing table above, showing all of the routers in the network including their interface IP addresses and subnet mask. You are told that in area 1 communication to the 192.168.4.0/24 network is down and that router R2 is unable to form an OSPF adjacency with the router R1. In area 2 communication to the 172.16.1.64/27 and 172.16.1.96/24 networks has been lost and router R4 is unable to form an adjacency. Area 0 is uh, behaving as expected. Coming to our topology, here we can see the area 1. Here um, the communication to this network that is 192.168.4.0 uh, in this router R2 is down. Also, they mentioned the router R2 is unable to form an adjacency, OSPF adjacency, uh, with the router R1. Coming to area 2, uh, here uh, the communication to uh, this network 172.16.1.64/27 and 172.16.1.96/27 networks uh, has been lost, and to this router that is R4 is unable to form an adjacency. Coming to part 2 1, use show commands to troubleshoot OSP of uh, V2 area 1. In part 1, using the particular uh, symptoms of network failure reported in the background or scenario, uh, begin troubleshooting configuration settings at the routers in area 1. So we will come to step 1, check the router configurations in area 1. Because R2 is not forming an adjacency with R1, Console into R2 and check its interface IP address configuration and its multi-area OSP of version 2 configuration. Use the show running config command to view the configuration. Uh, is R2's OSP of router process configuration present and correct? We will check that. Are the network statements including subnets, wildcard bits and area numbers correct? So all these things we will check now uh, on this router R2. Coming to the router R2. Enable, here we are going to give the command show running config. And we will check OSPF configuration, here we can see that. Router OSPF1, router ID. And here we can see the network details. Uh, coming to our topology, here we can see this R2 uh, got two uh, directly connected networks. Here we can see that 192.168.2.0/24. Uh, here we can see the details. While the guard bit is correct, area one is correct, and we can see one more network that is 192.168.4.0/24 in area one. Here we can see the details. Yes, it's correct. Yes, this R2 OSP of routing configuration uh, is correct. Now we will come to B. On R2, issue a show IP OSP of interface command to check the hello timer interval configuration and to verify that hello messages are being sent. Uh, is R2's hello timer interval configuration set to the default settings? Uh, is the dead time interval uh, four times uh, the hello time interval? Are hellos being sent 
All this we will check with the help of the show command show IP or ISP of interface. Coming to the router R2. Here we are going to give the command show IP OSP of interface and here we can see the details. Coming to the topology, here we can see the interface details uh, that is uh, gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0. Here we can see that. Here we can see uh, hello timer 10. And we can see uh, the dead time interval is uh, uh, four times of this uh, hello. It's correct. And here we can see these uh, hellos are being sent. Here we can see that uh, time changes. So here we can see our two's time interval configuration is default at hello 10 and dead is a 40. Also uh, we had seen our uh, hellos are being sent. Now we will come to see if R2's configurations and settings are correct then the problem of not forming an adjacency must lay with R1. Yes. So console into R1 and check the network interface and OISP of V2 configurations in the running configuration. Are the R1 network interfaces configured correctly? Is there a problem in the R1 ISP of V2 routing process configuration that would cause an adjacency failure? We will check that now. Coming to the router R1. Enable show running config. And here we can see ISP of configuration. Router ISP of 1, router ID. So we can see passive interface gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0. Coming to our router, we can check that interface gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0. Here we can see that. We should not make this interface as a passive interface. That's why R1 is not forming or R2 uh, is not forming an adjacency here uh, in this area 1. Anyway, we will uh, check the network also here. Uh, here we can see the first network, uh, network 192.168.1.0. Uh, here we can see that network, uh, wildcard bits, uh, area, everything is correct. Coming to the second network, uh, 192.168.2.0. Here we can see that it's correct, area 1. And uh, one more network, 192.168.3.0, um, area 1. Here we can see that. So this network, everything correct. So here everything configured correctly except this uh, uh, passive interface on this uh, uh, interface gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0. Coming to D, correct the configuration error on R1. So we have to give a no passive interface gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0. Coming to R1, we will give that zoom it configure terminal router ISP of process ID 1 here we are going to give no passive interface the interface is gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 after a moment here we can see we received this message process 1 neighbor 2.2.2.2 on gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 from loading to full loading done coming to e if the problem has been corrected r1 should receive a syslog message to the console showing an ospf adjacency change from loading to full uh, did a syslog message appear in the r1 console reporting an ospf adjacency change yes we had seen that here coming to step 2 Check the router configurations in area 2. Coming to A, because it was reported that the network has lost contact with the area 2 uh, subnets, that is 172.16.1.64 and 172.16.1.96. Verify this at the area 2 border router uh, ABR2. Here we can see that router. 
right using the show IP root command does the ABR2 routing table show the presence of these networks these two networks we will check that coming to the router ABR2 enable show IP root now we will check uh, these networks are present in this table or not that is 1.96 and 1.64 no it's not there coming to B check to see if ABR2 has established an OSPF v2 neighbor adjacency with R3 uh, does ABR2 show two OSPF neighbors which neighbor ID signifies R3 and how do you know this right we will check that coming to our topology here we can see uh, for this router abr2 uh, here we can see two neighbors one is asbr and r3 so we will get the uh, ids of these uh, routers enable here we will give a show ip ospf and here we can see the id uh, 7.7.7.7 .7 also we will get the id of r3 enable show IP OSPF and here is the ID it's a 3.3.3.3 now we will come back to ABR2 and we will check the neighbors here using the show command show IP OSPF neighbor yes here we can see uh, those uh, two uh, neighbors that is 3.3.3.3 and 7.7.7.7 uh, coming to C uh, because ABR2 has formed a neighbor relationship with R3 the problem may lay with the OSPF v2 configurations on either R3 or R4 console into R3 and check the OSPF v2 configurations in the running configuration are there any problems with the R3 OSPF v2 routing process configurations we will check that coming to the router R3 here we are going to give the command show running config and we are going to verify uh, the OSPF configuration coming to the topology here we can see the device R3 uh, with the two directly connected networks so we uh, this we can see in the area 2 here we can see the details uh, 172.16.1.32 here we can see that network uh, while the guard bits uh, it's correct area 2 yes it's correct coming to the next network 172.16.1.64 here we can see that uh, while the guard bits it's correct here we can see they given area 0 instead of area 2 hence here we can see this network statement uh, is configured incorrectly uh, here they given this area 0 instead of area 2 coming to D uh, to correct the problem uh, replace the OSP of routing process network statement that places the 172.16.1.64 slash 24 subnet in area 0 and change it to area 2 here we can see that command now we will implement that uh, in the router uh, on this router R3 coming to R3 we will copy this command we require this configure terminal here we are going to give a router OSPF process ID 1 and we are going to remove that network here is that now we will give it's correct and now we have to give the area as instead of 0 we have to give 2 uh, did a syslog message appear in the R3 console uh, reporting an OSPF adjacency change? What does this uh, signify? We will check that. Here we can see that message uh, process 1 neighbor 4.4.4.4 uh, loading done. Yes, it signifies that this router R3 is formed an adjacency with this router R4. Coming to E. Verify that the R3 routing table has routes to all of the networks in all of the OSPF areas. 
Are any roots missing? If so, which ones? We will check that. Coming to R3. Here we are going to give show IP root. Here we can see uh, one uh, root OS uh, LAN Dubai with the help of the protocol OSPF uh, 172.16.1.96. Here we can see that network, it's a remote network. Also, we can see a connected network. Here we can see one. 172.16.1.64. Here is that. And we got one more, that is 172.16.1.32. Here we can see that network. And we cannot see uh, any other network mentioned here. So in this routing table, we can see uh, this entire area is missing from this routing table. Uh, that is uh, this uh, 192.168 uh, ne networks. Coming to F, it appears that R3 is missing the OSPF V2 inter area uh, 192.168.0.0/21 summary root. To solve this problem. Completely remove the OSPF v2 routing process from router R3 and then re-add it. So we are going to remove this uh, uh, OSPF v2 routing process and uh, we are going to re-add it. Coming to the router R3. Configure terminal. Here we are going to give a no router OSPF1. Then we are going to add it again, router OSPF1. Then we have the router ID as 3.3.3.3. .3 now we are going to give the network. Here we can see those networks. We will copy this network from here. And we got one more here. Coming to G. Now verify that the R3 routing table has lent the OSPF inter area summary root uh, to the 192.168.0.0/21 subnet. Is the OSPF inter area root uh, to this network uh, in the routing table? We will check that now. Coming to the router R3. Again, we are going to give the command to show IP root. Yes, here we can see that. Here we can see inter area root to this network 192.168.0.0/21. Also, we can see the other networks. Now, here in this routing table, we can see uh, all the networks 192.168 networks. Also, uh, these networks 10.1.1.0 and 10.2.2.0. Well, that's all in this packet tracer activity uh, that is a troubleshoot the multi area OSPF v2. Here we can see completion status 100%. Friends, if you have any doubt in this packet tracer activity, please comment below. Also, if you like my video, give a thumb and share to your friends. And don't forget to subscribe the channel if not yet subscribed, so that you will get latest uploading video info into your Gmail. Thank you.